So as a self distraction, I thought I would um, make a Facebook live of the Kun Pen Ning Ha Kun Pen Fifteen. Which, if you're of those Kun Pen Seventeen people, or to make any silly comments, fuck off, because. Uh, I've been to Watlahan, right, and I've been in the amulet section and I've seen the paper signed by Lumbu Tim for the 2517BE edition and it gives permission for a lot of amulets but it doesn't give permission to make Kun Pen and it's not in the list. So they were never even in the list of 2517BE. And these are 2515BE and this video is for 2515BE Kun Pen devotees not for know-it-all bullshitters who haven't studied a tenth of what I've studied about Prakun Pan Putin. This one has a drawn code Salah and hand inscriptions and is in Nanak. First visitor, so I'll turn it round again. That is in Nernak with hand inscriptions. And is in Nerdang, alongside Rare Tongkam. Red. You have two kinds of red the pinkish, Ner Chongpu, or Ner Punkin Mark, which is the pink seashell. Uh, um, it's like a lime powder which you use to chew beetle areca nut with. And this deep red one is actually Wan Sabu Lut mixed with Kao Niao Sok, uh, blessed sticky rice. And if you can, as you notice, it's not painted bronze as you see many Kun Pen, Lumbu Tim painted bronze. It is, it has gold flakes stuck to it. Uh, this is a very thick pin block press because they make more than one block press which also proves why all of these so called 2517B exports talk bullshit because if it doesn't have this little mark here then it's not real excuse me the block press broke after 5000 and they still had another 2000 to press in that colour so they used the second what do you call it uh you know like you have a second engine on your boat uh, the, 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 the safe safety one so I usually make up to five block presses with each different amulet and that's why looking at the features or the little dot or the hole here or this that it can tell you which block press it is but if you only know one block press like most of these 2517BE idiots um, that or you've not been a monk like me and made amulets and actually been involved in the making and pressing of them and seen a block press break seen a broken block press and seen the secondary and the tertiary and the qu quartery and the quintary the th second third fourth and fifth block presses be taken out and then break one by one and some uh, and some editions are called block tag because the final block press broke and they were unable to press the actual desired and stated number of amulets intended so we look at the nuaha the study content of this one as you can see it has crab forming the powdery substance that's basically the bang uh, the pong praiko man rising up and the bang bang pong yan rising up through the surface and red sabu luat has a texture that as you can see is very stony you don't see that marbled kind of crackly texture you see on some of the amulets that have the kanyao sook sticky rice in but believe me this does have sticky rice in it it's just not as visible because of the texture and the smoothness of the wan sabu lured uh, blood soap herb powders and back to the gold as we were talking about the gold that is stuck on here this was done in a particular method it, uh, if it's painted all gold all over, you'll see. It, you'll have seen me post ones like that. That is tar bronze wanit, which means it's like an industrial bronze, or 
uh, a bronze paint or a gold paint with a certain amount of bronze or gold content in it, which they used to paint with. And that was one thing they did. The other thing they did, this is solid gold, by the way. The reason that this is titled 3K is because it has a solid silver hand inscribed with the code Salah stamp. A knack, which I call bronze or copper, whatever you want to call it, uh, with the Salah code stamp and the Yantha. And solid gold. So it's a 3K. They were separate. I found them and brought them back together. That is an act of merit in itself to search and collect amulets to find to the point where you found the red version, sorry, the red version in silver and inscribed the red version in nak and the red version in gold, which is called 3K, Three Kings, Sam Gasat, Three Kings, yeah, of Lung Butim. So we look at the Nurha. And you can see it, Nergrang, it's very old and dense. But this particular one, Sabu Luat, uh, it looks very thick because of the plate on the back as well. And this particular block press is quite thick, but it's not as thick as it looks due to this Yantra foil being folded around the back in solid gold and hand inscribed and stamped. Yeah, by Lung Po, assumedly or his top looks it, which might have been Lumpu Gao. And here is the silver one to look at the Nurha. I'm zoomed in as much as I can. Ah, okay, let's get in there. That's a little bit too much zoom, looking blurry. Let's look at the Nurha. So back to the gold, I forgot, ADHD, man. They did this gold flake, which you call not ta bronze one it. If it's this effect, you call it long sai re tong kam. Long sai re tong kam is when in the stone or what wood or whichever block press they used or the or the brass block press or the block leg, what some people call, which means the metallic block press. Some people think it's another block press which is made of iron because leg means iron. And the people who call the brass block press the block leg confuse people by making them think there's another block called the iron block press. And then they say, this is fake because it's the brass block press is fake. It's the block leg that's the real one. And they're talking about the same fucking block press, excuse my language. So anyway, we can now see the Nurha. Let's get back to amulet talk. And we can see the gold flakes. They would take the block press, put in Naman Prajautaxin, which is an oil, or Naman Ngasek, which is blessed white sesame oil, blessed meaning received incantations, and then take the soft clay used for pressing this amulet and push it into the block press until this form of the Buddha surrounded by the Sumrun Gyao, the crystal arch, above the Tanbua, the lotus dace, is formed by pressing it into the concave form of the block press. And with the oil and the flakes of solid, get off, the flakes of solid gold uh, stick to the surface and even absorb within the Muansan, which is why you can see them deeply absorbed in some examples, less on the red versions than in some other ones. But that's how it got the effect. And the other way to do it was that to just press it and then when it came out, paint the oil onto the amulet and sprinkle the gold onto it. That was done much less, I believe. Yeah. And there's another secret about this and this. If you look here, you see a slight bulge which you don't see on this side. But there's a secret about this which I'm not going to tell you. But it's one of the secrets I use to know authenticity. And I'm not going to teach that one yet because that one's going... I'm developing a Patreon channel and I'm making a Google Classroom with free classrooms for people of Amulet School. But there will also be subscriptions. Because everybody's bloody doing it, 
And when I give knowledge to people, they stop buying from me because they get like me and know how to find it, where to find it. And so if I'm going to teach you where and how to find it the way I can and lose your custom, you're going to subscribe and pay for the subscription to learn how to do it. Because if not, I'm going to go bankrupt and I'm a fool. I've done that till now and I will teach the basics and continue to teach you these. How to look at Muan San and if you're good enough, then you can do it. But there are secrets like the secret I told you about this. And there are secrets like secret code stamps that Lung Bu Tim would put in and not even tell his devotees. He would only tell the person who he taught how to make amulets. And a few people know about it who are total manic depressive type, never give up until you find out the information type maniacs like myself. So there's the Muan San. Very stony, very hard, very dense, very smooth on the Sankati of the chest. You can see the long fingers of the hand which are curved and very beautiful and go over to the bulge of the arm of the Buddha here. This is very different from the Kun Pen 17, which has a very rounded, not such an attractive elongated finger. And the thumb itself is also different. And this, depending on the block press, there's different ones. So this is a Song Pon Yai, by the way. It's a Song Pon Yai. Which will have, or a Pimnak Gram, some people say. It has thicker arms here, yeah. And the Kun Pen 15 Classic is a different look, which will, on the Kun Pen 15 Classic, this here will have a bit more of a wiggle on the Pragate Mala. The Pragate Mala here, yeah. You can see it does slightly tilt, but on the Song Pon Yai, you w will see that less. And the Song Pon Yai is thicker and heavier. And it costs about 40% more to encase in gold than the normal Block Tong Luang, Block Press. Same as the Pim Lai Lung, the one that has the little puddle hole in the side next to the Buddha is another Block Press. But there you go. These ones are not certificated because I actually certificated another set I got in 3K, which were in white powders with crab grot that had been buried in a chedi. But I never got them in the store because somebody bought them straight away. Thanks, Mr. J. Hope you're doing well in Hong Kong. He's very happy with them. And he's the only other owner of a 3K set I know of like this. His is white, mine is red. And um, I'm not going to certificate them. The other three I certificated and put in competition and I got first, second and third prize with each of them. And they're exactly the same, but instead of red, they were white powders. So actually, if I do send them to Ajahn Pisek, and enter them in competition, they've got just as good a chance as those three I put in last time, which got first, second, and third prize for the one covered in gold, the one covered in nag, and the one covered in silver, or the, 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 the best red-colored one. I can't remember what category they won in, but they did win first prizes. Uh, first, second, and third prizes, sorry. And so this set... I am putting up on offer. I'm not putting it in the shop and I will not split it up. I will only let these to anybody who is already a devotee of Kun Pen 15. Not somebody who's going to buy them blindly, never heard of the Kun Pen. Lumbu Tim suddenly heard of it, buys one, and then has one of these Kun Pen 2517BE idiots fill their ears full of doubts and ask for the money back and to send it back to me. I do not 
sell these amulets to those kind of people. You have to be a well-studied devotee of Kun Pen 15. Otherwise, don't bother. Do your studies first and then decide which line of Kun Pen Numputim you are going to believe in, collect and follow and busha. Don't do it after buying them. Do it before you buy them and decide which group you belong to because there's a 2517 group and there's a 2515 group and I'm 2515 which means anything before 2517 edition because the list signed by Lumpu Tim of amulets to be made in the 2517 BE edition has the Prakring Chinaban Chon, it has the Rien Jaran Pawn, it has the Rien Sema coin, it has Pong Praguman, the Sibali, it has different things. But one thing that is not in the list, signed with permission by Lumbu Tim for the 2517B edition, in the letter asking for permission by the investors from Bangkok who made it, did not give permission for making Kun Pan. So, how on earth did they make Kun Pan 2517s when Lung Pu himself did not sign permission? He signed permission to make Prat Green, to make coins, to make Pitta, to make Chayawat and Prat Green and Sankajai. He did not give permission to make Kun Pan. He gave permission for this kind of thing. And this definitely permission. This is the first edition which came a long time before 2517, mate. And they're trying to say that before Lung Bu Tim's last year of life, through all his 1890, I don't know how old he was when he passed, I can't remember his exact age, that he never made amulets until the last year of his life. And that he only made Kun Pen in the last year of his life. And then they go and show you amulets like this, which is the first edition, which is a first edition coin, which I believe was released about 2510 or something. I can't remember. Which proves the whole thing to be a lie. And there you go. And so there you go. This uh, a triple set 3K, 3K Kun Pan with NAC hand inscriptions solid silver and solid gold anybody interested as a curator and a devotee of Lumbu Tim and a believer in the truth what I consider to be the truth because to say the truth that's a matter of opinion and what I consider to be the truth of the Prat Kun Pan Lumbu Tim this is the Pim Song Pon Yai you can uh, email me at Ajahn Spencer, exactly how you spell Ajahn with the R, not in Singapore with the H. Just like it says on my profile, Ajahn Spencer, no breaks, at iCloud.com or at gmail.com. I'll get either of them. Or you can Thailand Amulets at Outlook.com. I will also receive that. If you would like to make an offer, I will be very happy to consider it. DHL, I just spoke with them. They are sending around the world. It's a little bit slower than they usually are, but the only way to get your stuff in the moment is by DHL. Anybody who's interested in this set will, of course, receive them with free DHL. Depending on how much they offer for the set, I, I will definitely include free solid silver casing but if you want free solid gold casing then you're going to have to make me a good offer for the set because gold in the moment is very highly priced and i would advise to just buy it and, and encasing gold later when the price drops to be honest but i could definitely i would definitely encase them myself in nice silver casing and i'm not selling them separately this is for curators. They're all, they were all separated. I've done it twice. I found a gold one twice in white, uh, uh, a gold one twice. One was white, one was red. A silver one twice, one was white, one was red. A knack, a bronze one twice, 
One was white, one was red. The white ones are gone. I received the red ones afterwards. And I believe if I remember right, my friend, my mate in Hong Kong, I think he said, damn, why didn't you show me these? And I'd, I'm not sure, I might be remembering wrongly. But I think he said that, or, or somebody else in a conversation. And I think I replied, uh, because I've only just received them, and I received them two days after I sent all of the rest for, uh, I took all of the rest to competition. Otherwise, these would have been entered into competition. Well, the other three won first, second and third prizes, which was, it didn't surprise me, actually. I just thought because to, to, to unify separate items into a set of 3K Kun Pan, Lumpu Tim, like this, requires a lot of time and effort and searching it increases the value, you know. Somebody who collects all five block presses or all however many block presses and versions they ever made of this coin and brings them all together into one collection, curated, and sells it as a set. If you sold them individually, they'd have price X. But if you sold the whole thing as a set, it would be worth double that, at least because of all the years or decades of work in finding each different one and bringing them all together into a set. Do you understand that? How difficult that is. That's one aspect of reunifying sets into a gamagan from single amulets into a gamagan set, into a curator's set, yeah? Requires a lot of professionality, persistence, work, study, constant searching, risking your money, getting the real one and the fake one and the trying and trying and looking around and calling and it's a lot of work to bring three separate ones together from three separate sources that belong together as a 3K set. I'm sorry, with hand inscriptions of Lung Bu Tim. Brought back together, I consider that a meritorious work in itself. If I never sell them and keep them myself, I will encase them in gold, if nobody ever asks for them, and I'll wear all three of them round my neck. That's 3K. Three Kings Kun Pan Song Pon Yai. 2515 B.E. Solid silver, solid gold, and uh, bronze hand inscriptions. Wow.